There's some similarities and differences between SLA 3D printers and FDM 3D printers. In this video, I'll explain some of those. The part on the left here was printed on this SLA machine, which uses a pool of resin that is UV cured and then a laser to cure that one layer at a time. And SLA printing is a little bit more expensive, but it's very detailed. You can see this, it has huge amounts of detail the internal structures, and then even this railing, the little posts that hold it up, are about the thickness of a piece of paper. They're a little bit thicker, so it can do very detailed parts, but it takes longer, and it tends to be a little bit more expensive for the resin. And then this is an example of an FDM machine, just like this one, where it prints using a roll of filament, which is cheaper, and then does that layer by layer and there's less detail, but it prints faster. We printed some of these smaller clone helmets on the smaller Creality Ender 3. This is the CR10, and the print bed is much bigger, and typically resin printers aren't able to get print beds this large. There are a few, but they get very expensive. But a larger FDM machine like this can be $300, which is a lot cheaper than what you could get a resin printer for, and it doesn't take as long. So this is a very large helmet that I'm probably actually gonna be able to wear that this is able to print in probably about three days. So it does take a while, but it's super cool. This is a Lego piece that we are printing here on this machine. This is FDM, and the resolution isn't as high as it is on SLA. We'll go ahead and pull this off and see how well it fits. You can see the beams coming up to connect this piece. Those are called support structures that hold the piece in place, and then printing diagonally can give you a better surface finish and already I can tell this is much more detailed than the one printed by the FDM. I'm going to snap this piece off into some rubbing alcohol to get it all cleaned up. I'll just clean off the resin by swishing this around in some isotrope rubbing alcohol. All right, and from the rubbing alcohol, we'll put it into some soapy water. Now I'm going to run it under some warm water so the support structures will break off easier. We'll break off the front support here, just like that. The supports on the back are gonna be a lot easier if we just clip them off. The UV resin does tend to be a bit more expensive. We got this bottle from Sane Smart for about $35, and this is 1,000 milliliters of clear. The slicing software that formats this for the printer gives you an estimate of what this is gonna cost and it said this costs about three cents of material. You could use a UV light to cure this, or you could just use the sun. Typically, that's what I like to do because there's a lot of UV light coming from that. Set it outside for about an hour so it can cure. Here's the FDM one, and here's the SLA one, and then this is an actual injection molded Lego. The FDM printed part does fit into the Lego, but it is definitely tight. The end of the axle here isn't too great, it just kind of bends up a little bit here. So once this part cures, we can just shave that off a little bit. And from what I can tell, it looks like this will fit. Then the, the edges all fit in. There's just a little bit of a corner that's been rounded over there. And then also in the corner of the, the inside corners here, it seems like there's almost built up resin that should have drained out, but it didn't and cured in there. This is... A nice small machine. It was a really good price from Creality. It probably about $230. It does stink a bit. The resin has a smell to it. It does say that it has a fan here in the back that filters it through a activated carbon filter, which might reduce the smell. And if you had this in a smaller room, it would be a little bit stronger. This is a little bit of a larger room and you do smell it. So if this is in an office, you might smell it a little bit more. Whereas this FDM machine doesn't smell quite as much. You just smell the plastic a little bit, but it's not quite as strong as the resin. I'm gonna go ahead and print another one of these. Something that's different on a SLA machine is as soon as you click print, it starts doing your print. Whereas like on an FDM machine, it has to heat up the bed, heat up the extruder. That might take five minutes, depending on the printer, where this just immediately starts printing. This resin, like I said, cures whenever it's exposed to UV light. And on the screen down here, it shows you what each layer is looking like. And there's a laser that goes and sort of colors in that pattern. And what it does is it just cures the resin in that section and then it bonds to the bed. And then it does that one layer at a time. So it'll cure and then lift up and then go right back down, except one layer higher. And then it'll print another layer and another layer. 
So it's a very similar process to FDM except more detailed and coming out of resin. Now that the resin is cured, it's hard enough that we can file some off of it in the areas where it messed up. And this stuff files really nicely. With just a few strokes of the file, this fits really nicely into a normal Lego part. The FDM is a little bit tighter, and since we printed this out of PLA, you can't really file it as easy. This resin files so easy. That surprised me a lot. The, um, the PLA isn't great. It'd be a lot easier if you made it out of ABS if you were going to sand it down. Now, there's also some proportions that we need to adjust in the file, but there are definitely some differences. There probably could be some formatting done to the FDM to get it um, where it kind of sagged down. There could be more support structures printed there to support the material better. So there's a lot to learn on both of these machines and these can both do very cool parts.